All right, so now you've been introduced to myoglobin and a, a basic idea of the structure of myoglobin. So I thought it would be good, a good time to take a look at the prosthetic group that binds to all globins, which is heme. Uh, this, remember we talked before about wanting to learn how oxygen uh, is bound by myoglobin and, and hemoglobin and how it's transported to the cells. Well, heme is the important part of this, of this uh, whole process. And we're not going to talk about all the details today. I just wanted to introduce you into what, he, what a heme group is so that when you're looking closer at the structure of these globins, you understand how, why it's where it is and, and its importance. So heme is a prosthetic group. So some proteins have um, a prosthetic group or a non-protein structure that is bound to them and is important for their function. And that's what the globins have. They have heme. Now, the basic uh, building block of heme is uh, a porphyrin ring, okay? And this is a porphyrin ring. It is made up of four identical, or not, or, or very closely related pyrrole rings, okay? So these are rings that have nitrogen and carbon in them, and there's some double bonds in there. So these rings are then connected by these bridges to form an overall tetro, tetrapyrrole ring or um, a porphyrin, okay? And now this is a very similar building block to something that is in a lot of other different uh, substances and proteins. So you'll find something very similar to this in chlorophyll and in proteins like cytochrome C or a lot of the, um, the uh, pigments, the pigment proteins, um, things like catalase. So if you're interested, this might be a fun uh, final project for you is to uh, compare and contrast um, other proteins that have these porphyrin uh, prosthetic groups in them. Now the interesting thing is they have very different functions in these different uh, proteins and different um, compounds. Uh, so there's a couple reasons for that. And one of the reasons is they tend to bind different types of metal ions in the middle. And so what heme binds is iron. So we can show you that by adding that right now. So if it's going to be a heme, it's going to have a porphyrin ring bound to iron, an iron atom in the middle, okay? So this is the basic structure of a heme. So this is a heme group, porphyrin ring with an iron bound. Now in the globins, this is attached to the globin molecule, the globin protein, by a histidine residue, okay? So that is an amino acid with a histidine side chain, something like that. So in the protein, it will be it will be held in place by that amino acid. So the iron has six coordination positions, these, these places where other atoms can bind. And um, the four of them are taken up by the nitrogen atoms here. One is, is being taken up by the histidine. You'll see that there's another one open here, and that is to bind oxygen, okay? So when heme is in a high oxygen area, it will bind oxygen at this place. And when it, it is in, in a low oxygen area, like where the, in the cells, near the cells where they need oxygen, then it will come off, okay? This is, this is a more complicated process that we are going, going to go into in, um, in, a more, in more depth later, but this is the main idea of the heme group. So there's another way in which the, these prosthetic groups um, have a special function, or another reason that they have a special function, and that has to do with where they're located, their environment. In this case, in this heme, these are going to be embedded in a globin protein. And what we're going to learn about in the next upcoming units is how the environment of the globin protein around it allows it to have its specific function of picking up oxygen and dropping it off. So we said that one determining factor of the function of a prosthetic group is 
the metal ion that is bound to the, to the porphyrin ring. And in heme, that happens to be iron, an iron atom. Um, and you can see this is a new model that we're looking at. And there's the iron atom that's bound to the nitrogen atoms within the porphyrin ring. But another determining factor of the function of a, a prosthetic group is the environment in which it lives. So at, in some of these enzymes that I mentioned, it's the protein structure around that heme uh, group. And we're going to talk about that in greater detail as we go through the program. But I wanted you to take a look at the structure of this so that you can see how it is embedded in the protein. And when you look at this, this should look familiar. We've got this histidine side chain that is bound to the iron on one side and the oxygen that's bound on the other side. But something that you didn't see in the last model is that there are some functional groups that are going to be bound to these different carbons around this ring. And in heme, there are uh, two functional groups on one end that have oxygens in them. And as you probably remember from the modeling you've done, the oxygens are going to make these functional groups uh, more polar, more hydrophilic whereas on these other sides, these are going to be more nonpolar, more hydrophobic, okay? And you can see then how this is embedded in each globin, each hemoglobin subunit. It is embedded so that the, these three sides are inside the protein, and then these are sticking out on the outside. Okay, and so you'll see that if you look at each subunit, that's how they are oriented with the hydrophilic groups on the outside and the, the hydrophobic buried on the inside. Okay, now we, as we move through, we'll talk a little bit more. We will revisit heme, but I wanted to give you a good introduction into the heme functional group because you'll be seeing a lot of it.